morning and welcome to the program Faith in Action, God in Motion. Please don't forget this program. It's a new program and it's coming to your life from our Christian TV station right here in El Paso. And I'm your pastor and teacher, Pastor Kofi Ben Bani. I am the pastor of the Koinonia Family Church. We call ourselves KFC, abbreviation, so you can remember by remembering KFC. Our church is located on the west side of El Paso, on Donovan and Salon Park in the corner there. And the address is 1060 Donovan Park Circle, Suite E. If you need to call, just call phone number 915 three four five three two eight zero some of you had called me last week to ask for prayers and i thank you for calling and i pray that the prayers that i prayed with you and what we pray for god will answer the prayer if you need prayer uh, at any time for anything call that number nine one five three four five three two eight zero or text me Pastor Kofi, I need prayer. Don't call me to argue or don't call me to insult me, but call me so we can pray together for deliverance, for healing, for salvation, and for the kingdom of God to manifest in your life. Today we are going to continue our study on the subject of faith. Last week I told you that faith is like a spiritual GPS. You have your GPS, you don't know where you are going, you program it, you put the address. The only way you're going to get there is to follow what the GPS says. So faith is uh, something that we don't, the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So for your faith to actualize, you have to recognize that your GPS is your faith. It will lead you to where God wants you to go. But Paul also said faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. This is last week. And the only way your GPS is going to lead you to your destination is for you to listen and follow what the GPS says. The same thing with faith. The only way your faith is going to be actualized, activated, and lead you is that you listen to the word of God, what God says about every given situation. That was last week. Today we're going to talk about how to live or walk by faith. Somebody called me and said, Pastor, you're talking about faith. How do we walk by faith? How do we live by faith? So this morning I'm going to talk about how to live or walk by faith. But before we do, let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We love you. We glorify you. This is the day that you have made for us. We shall rejoice and be glad. God, if anyone, anybody that is hearing this message today is going through anything circumstantially, whether it be sickness, addiction, marriage, children, I pray that your grace will abound upon them. Your mercy will come. Your loving kindness is better than life and shower upon them. Bring healing, bring deliverance, bring salvation to each and every one that will tune in to hear this message that needs your help in Jesus' name. Lord, bless your word and let your word be like a treasure. Your word be life. Your word be healing. Your word be joy and peace in the Holy Spirit to your hearers tonight, this morning. I know that some of you may not be believers, may be religious, but if you just fumble and tune in and you hear this word, I also want to encourage you that there is salvation in Jesus waiting for you. And these words tonight, today and many other ones that come through this channel or this TV station can lead you to salvation. I have a pastor friend who last time we were talking, he said, I just preach deliverance. Because Jesus delivered me from drugs. He delivered me from uh, addiction to drugs. And so I preach the same because Jesus did it for me. And I want to encourage you, if you are dealing with drug addiction, if you are dealing with sickness, you are dealing with any kind of predicament that you cannot, doctors cannot help you, call upon Jesus. Jesus will save you. Jesus will deliver you. Jesus will heal you. But let's talk about the subject of the day. How do we walk or live by faith? I want to start this from the, 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 the book that we all are very familiar with, the book of Proverbs, which was written by Solomon, the son of David. 
the Bible classifies Solomon as the wisest man on earth during his time. And I can even argue that even up to today, as far as God's wisdom is concerned, nobody had been able or will be able yet to demonstrate the depth of wisdom that Solomon had. And that blessed him to make him who he was, and God used him. So we can listen to Solomon, because Solomon was very rich. Solomon was very famous. Solomon was very everything. But the top of his life, the apex of his life, was the wisdom that God gave to him. So Solomon is very particular to talk about his son, about wisdom. He could have talked about his son about how to make money, how to be the Elon Musk of, of the day, or how to be the Bill Gates of the day, or Zuckerberg of the day. Or the, but no, 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 no. He's talking to his son about how to walk in wisdom, the power of wisdom, the preeminence of wisdom, the importance of wisdom. And in chapter 3, he comes to say the same thing, but in different words, and articulate for us how we can walk by faith as it relates to the wisdom that is God himself. He said, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. For the length of your days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I don't have to go back to give you an introduction. In chapter 2 of the book of Proverbs, Solomon talks about wisdom, the value of wisdom, how valuable is wisdom. And Solomon declared that wisdom will work for you if you know what you want or why you want it and how badly you want it to happen. Wisdom is God's power, God's ability, God's open door, God's manifested presence that gives us how we assess, how we, 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 we adjudicate, even how we come to interpret things in our life from God's perspective. So with that in mind, that Telemann said, we don't, wisdom is valuable. And then in the New Testament, Paul said in the book of Corinthians, that Jesus Christ is the wisdom and the power of God. Contextually, Paul was talking about the gospel that is foolishness to the Greeks and stumbling block to the Jews, but except those of us who are saved, the gospel is the wisdom. Jesus is the wisdom and the power of God. So take that and keep it on one side. We're talking about wisdom, and Solomon relates to wisdom as the most valuable thing that any human being can ascribe or desire or look for. And Paul comes in the New Testament and said, wisdom is the, uh, Jesus is the power and wisdom of God. So let's say we all agree that for you and for me, the basic, the standard, the apex, the spectrum, the high, the low, the breadth, and the depth of wisdom is Jesus Christ. So if you want to walk in wisdom, you want to walk in what Solomon said, the word of God, the law. said, so do not forsake or forget the word of God. Anybody who is going to walk in the wisdom of God must start with the word of God. You can't forget the word of God. He said, keep the word. The word, I, I, this is what I say. Anytime you read the Bible in the Old Testament and you see these two words, law and commandment, don't be confused. The only descriptive English word we have is law. But for me, the word of God is a prescription. It's not a law. It's not a commandment like the military. Some people become rebellious. Some people just uh, don't want to deal with the word because it's a law. We are not under law. No, the word of God in my interpretation is God's pre prescription. Like a doctor gave you prescription. So Solomon is telling his son, if you want to walk in wisdom, use the value of wisdom, you have to not forget the prescription of God. And I'm going to change that word law for prescription. And let your heart keep the prescription, the commandments of God for the length of your days 
and that the peace of life will come to you through the prescription. If you follow God's prescription, your life will be prolonged and the peace will be. He said, let not mercy and truth forsake you. That means if you are going to walk in wisdom, you've got to also understand the mercy of God. The mercy of God is a Touch to the truth of God. Uh, the, 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 the way we said it is that we said in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14, when he said, Jesus is the word that became flesh, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only one, begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Why? Grace is the same as mercy, but mercy is what we deserve. Grace is what we don't deserve. So when you say God is merciful to you, it means that what you're supposed to have gotten for what you did, God did not hold it against you, but he gave you his favor and grace. So Solomon is telling you and myself, do not forsake mercy and truth, the grace and favor of God. The outstanding ultimate reality of life is on the truth of God. He said, bind them around your neck, write them on the tablets of your heart, and so you find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and in the sight of man. Anybody who comes, if you are a Christian, uh, yes, 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 yes. You have to come to a place where you ask yourself, what is my definitive understanding, my definitive r r r way of applying the mercy of God, which is the grace of God and the truth of God to my life? And Solomon said, when you come to apply it and write it in your heart, you will find favor before God and man. Favor is the word for grace. So mercy translates into grace, but all of this becomes available for truth. What does this have to do with faith? It has to do with faith because if you are wise and you have value wisdom, you have to be very sure that you pay attention to the prescriptions of God. You have to pay attention to the mercy of God. You have to pay attention to the truth of God. You have to keep those in your heart. Solomon said, write them, inscribe them, seal them. Like when the way Solomon is using it, you know how when you want to label something, those of you who are in fraternities, when you go to fright houses and they want to label you, they put a hot iron in fire and put a symbol of the, of the fraternity on that and then they stamp it on your shoulders, on your, on your, on your bicep. So if you are a Q, they stamp that, and that thing is going to be on your, so your skin is going to melt, absorb, and the design is going to be on you. So the word of God, the truth of God, Solomon is saying that you seal it in your heart. You cement it in your heart. You, 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 you let it become, on a, you cannot get rid of it. It becomes a whole part of you and in you and by you. Then you are going to begin to understand how to walk by faith. There are three things, three words that Solomon used here that I want to explain quickly. When you come to accept the prescription, the word of God, if you come to uh, understand and appropriate the mercy and the truth of the word of God, and you come to get hold of the favor of God, the grace of God in grace. Everything that God gave us is given to us by grace. But this grace comes through faith. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Paul said it's not by works of righteousness that we are saved that anyone should boast. It's by the grace of God. But how do we appropriate the grace of God? We appropriate the grace of God through faith. Nobody gets saved without faith. God gave us, we started this by saying, God gave us the seed of faith, the gift of faith, the fruit of faith, so we can act on it to accept salvation. So even salvation, the grace of God, comes to you and me and everyone through the instrument of faith. So faith is very significant. So if it's by grace are we saved through faith, then everything that we do for God and with God must also come and happen through faith. That's why the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to, trust, to, to, to please God. So faith is very significant. Today I'm going to say to walk by faith, there are three things that Solomon outlined in this passage, especially in verse 5. He said, trust in the Lord. The first, the first thing that you want to understand, if you are a Christian, to walk by faith is that you have to lean on God. 
For example, if you are walking or hiking or going somewhere and something happened to your foot and you cannot walk, but you need to climb the hill, what are you going to do? You're going to lean on somebody. Somebody's going to put their, uh, their, their arm under your armpit, and then they will lift you up, so you lean on them. So you depend on their strength to do the rest of the journey. So what Solomon is saying is, trust means that you depend on the strength of God. The, the word trust has been so abused because it's so abstract. So I'm trying to explain it. If you trust God, it means you are leaning on God's strength to get what you want. Psalm 18. Let me just read this psalm quickly. We don't have plenty of time, but Psalm 18. Let me read it. Psalm number 18, verse 2. Psalm 18, verse 2. He said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. He used the same word, trust, but it's first said, my God, my strength. So trusting God means you are going to lean on God's strength to do everything that you want to do. Here is the key. Even if you know how to do it, when you lean on God's strength, it get, you get a better result. So trust means to lean on God's strength. Trust also means to cling to to cling to, to hook to, to connect to, to be welded to, just like a chain. If you clean, if you put a chain together and you weld it, it becomes unbreakable. So nobody, so what uh, Solomon is saying is trust in the Lord, lean on God, clean on God, let the strength of God be your support, be firm. And uh, the, the another word we say in the Hebrew that defines the conclusion of trust is the word amen. Amen means I stand firm on the promise of God. I stand firm on the presence of God. I stand firm on the prescription of God. For you and I to be able to walk by in faith, first we have to accept the prescription of God, the law, the commandment. Second, we have to let the mercy and the truth of the word of God uphold us. We are grounded in it. We bind it. We seal it like an emblem. And then we have to come to understand favor from God's perspective. Then you begin to walk. In trusting God, trust in the Lord with all your heart. It means that you have to lean on the strength of God. You have to cling onto the promises of God. You have to understand that your strength is limited, but God's strength is maximum strength will be available for you, and therefore you stand firm on God. The second thing that Solomon said that I need to explain, and the time is going, is he said. Do not lean on your own understanding. This is very important in the days that we live in. Because if you want to walk by faith, you cannot lean on your own understanding. In this context, let me explain. Your understanding is what we might call in today's language rationalism. Some people say they are rational Christians. That means they operate through the, the process of reasoning. Everything that they read, they have to reason about it. They have to take it to the school of rationality. They have, I know a lot of Christians who say, well, I don't do that faith stuff. I'm a rational being. Rash, reason is a God creation. God created a reason. So when you are saying that, it means that you are putting the creation before the creator. What Solomon is arguing is a wise person, a wise Christian, who wants to walk by faith, does not lean on reasoning. Because reasoning is as weak as the person who is processing it. I say it this way. Everything that human beings make has a flaw in it. Because human beings are flawed people. So if you are going to depend on reasoning, there's going to be a lot of flaw in your reasoning and anybody's reasoning. That's why God doesn't want us to live the Christian life just through rationality or reasoning alone. Even in the, in the centuries, when the Protestant movement started with Martin Luther, there were a lot of rationalists, we call them rationalists, who came and said, well, we can't do this first stuff. We have to think it through. But the key is, if you depend on your rationality or your reasoning to serve God, you're going to fail. Because reason is a creation of God and it's weak in many ways. But faith is a gift of God, the fruit of the Spirit, and does not fail. If you are a Christian and you are listening to me, I want you to hear this very carefully. 
because next week I'm going to teach about the distinction, the difference between rational Christians and faith Christians who, are, who, who believe and trust God and live by faith. And those who say they want to pray. There are many Christians who are rationalists, who live their Christian life based on rational, deductive process. Reason is a gift from God, but it's a creation of God. And it has weaknesses, just like the airplane. The third thing, so you have to trust, and then you have to not lean on your reasoning. You have to have not the ability to distinguish the real from the unreal. The true from false cannot come through reasoning. It only comes through revelation when it comes to God. No human being can reason enough to save themselves from evil. The best of the best of the best of reasoning or rational beings are still weak and sinful. Because reason cannot cure the sin or, or, or the, the defilement or the problem of sin. Only the spirit of God through faith can cure us. So there's a dichotomy. There's a, sub, a big gap between rational Christians and fideistic or Christians who live by faith. And I want to say reasoning is not bad. But we cannot become a put reason as an ultimate means or process by which we walk with God. We walk with God by trusting in him and being able to follow his prescription. Because wisdom is the principal thing that God gave that Solomon is talking about. So a wise person in Christ lived by faith, by trusting God, cleaning and leaning and strengthening on God, never depending on their rationality for the ultimate conclusive decision that they make. They always depend on God. The third thing that Solomon said is, do not, he said, trust in the Lord. Do not lean on your own rationality or understanding but in every way acknowledge God. What does that mean? It said in every way recognize God as the sole authority in every aspect of your life. Recognize the authority and the status of God to show what you know, give a recognition to God's authority. Anyone who wants to walk by faith, you got to follow these three principles. Trust God. Lean on his strength. Cling to God. Strength, your strength is in his strength. And be firm on God's prescription and his word. Say amen and stand firm. But don't lean on your own rationality. Hear me carefully. Reason is not bad. But reason is a creation. It's something God has created. It's part of our sinful nature. It is not infinite. It is not God. But faith is a gift from God. A fruit of the spirit. So if you want to grow in faith and walk by faith, your reasoning is just a tool that will draw you and bring you closer to God. But your final decision making has to be according to the word of God. And then you come to acknowledge. When you do that, it means that you come to acknowledge, you come to recognize that God is the sole authority of everything that you do. How good would it be for all of us who are Christians, get up every day and recognize God as the sole authority of every aspect of your life. Even things that you can do for yourself. You get up and you go to work. You do the work and get paid. But if God did not give you breath of life to get up, you won't start your day. So that means God is the sole authority of your rising up from bed, walking out from your house, sitting in your car, and going to work. I like the testimony of Billy Graham. Dr. Billy Graham, the late Dr. Billy Graham, was speaking at uh, one of the seminaries in Massachusetts which he was one of the board members, and people asked him about his children. And Billy Graham had three, has three, uh, has seven children. And Billy Graham said, I can't, it's not quoting direct, but he implied that out of the 52 weeks in a year, he never stayed home for more than two weeks or three weeks for a whole year. That means all his seven children were left with his wife to take care of them. But because she, the wife, and him, Billy Graham, had come in agreement to acknowledge and recognize the sole authority of God, that he, Billy, will go out and seek the kingdom and the righteousness of God, and God added everything. So eventually, Mrs. Graham took care of the seven children, but guess what? 
All of them came out immaculate. Yes, they had their flaws and this and that, but all of them, so just imagine one woman, Ruth, his wife, taking care of seven children. But because Billy's testimony was, because he and his wife recognized, they acknowledged the sole authority and the power of God over them and in their family and come into agreement, united. So he could go out and preach the gospel. And thousands and thousands of people came to know Jesus through Billy Graham's ministry. But he has to make that decision. He has to come to the acknowledgement of God being the sole authority and power. And him and his wife agree, so God took care of his family. That's what the Bible says. If you walk by faith, one of the principles that we need to understand is that you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things. Every day, everything, your marriage, your children, your body, your mind, your, your money, your sickness, everything culminatively seek first the kingdom try to please god try to be what god wants you to be where god wants you to be do what god wants you to be and acknowledge and 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 the, the sole authority of god over everything in your life and see if god will disappoint you so to walk by faith or live by faith means you come to trust you come to cling you come to lean you come to be firm on the principles or the prescription of God. Secondly, you do not make your final decisions of life based on your rationality or your capacity of reasoning. Thirdly, you come to recognize or acknowledge that God is the sole authority over everything. I guarantee you, God will never forsake you. Before we end, I want to ask you to support this program, Faith in Action, God in Motion and send your donations to the TV station on behalf of KFC, Koinonia Fellowship Church. Help us to bring this message. And if you are listening and you are not saved, I want to pray for you to receive Jesus because your faith is also the action that will lead you to experience the grace of God. So I pray, Father, for those who will come across this message and are not saved, that God, the Holy Spirit, will give them the faith that they can come to know Jesus and be saved and be delivered and set free. If you are going through anything that you need a breakthrough, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that God will give you the access to grace and set you free. In Jesus' name, amen.